now let us see for a heavily under reinforced section okay so we saw that in the previous case the balance reinforcement was about 3.25 percentage right and the very first case what we considered was ast equal to 1200 mm square but that corresponded to about half a percentage of your cross section area okay how did we get half a percentage 1200 divided by 400 into 600 which is a cross section area multiplied by 100 gave me half a percentage of your cross section that is the amount of steel that we have put for such a very low uh, reinforcement ratio tension reinforcement ratio we start changing my concrete strength what happens to the moment curvature so that is what we are going to do in this third example again the grade of steel i am keeping same so that we can compare uh, the performance okay so the grade of steel still remains 500 mega pascal and we are going to still use parabolic model because parabolic model for concrete in compression is valid up to uh, cylinder compressive strength of 40 mega pascal and again we are going to ignore the contribution of concrete in tension right so to look at it i mean how did we do that and now here we are not doing for the entire range of epsilon c we are doing only for ultimate condition when the concrete at top is 0.035 okay and it is a heavily under reinforced section so you can assume a neutral axis depth which is 102.8 mm you can ask me why did i take 102.8 because already we have done the calculations and we found out at x is equal to 102.8 your equilibrium condition is satisfied so i'm just showing the calculation for that So this is your strain diagram that you are assuming. This is your epsilon C U, and this is your X. So once X and epsilon C is fixed, I can get my epsilon T. So this is your similar triangle, right? So which we have done that. So from similar triangle, point double zero three point by X U should be equal to epsilon T divided by this is actually D minus X U. Okay, this is X U, right? So we can get epsilon T. You can see that even for this. Uh, concrete strength of 20 mega pascal at ultimate the strain in the steel is 0.0152 which is much much larger than your 0.0025 which is your yield strain per steel okay so that means the steel is yielding that means the stress in the steel is directly we can take that as 500 mega pascal because we are using a bilinear elastic perfectly plastic model when epsilon t becomes more than 0.0025 stress in the steel becomes 500 and it is going to remain constant until it reaches rupture strain so 500 multiplied by 1200 is going to give me force that when i divide by 1000 i get a tension force 600 kN now uh, for calculating the concrete uh, force in compression of course alpha 1 and beta 1 are dependent only on epsilon c that i am taking for epsilon c of 0.0035 Alpha one works out to be 0.81, beta one works out to be 0.9. What we have done in the previous cases, but then once alpha one and beta one is no, x is no, f prime c is given to you. So, so you can calculate your CC as alpha one, f prime c, beta one, x u multiplied by breadth of the section, which is 400. So you get a force of 599.5 kilonewton. So compression force is nearly equal to that of tension. So we can say that equilibrium condition is satisfied. then we can go ahead and calculate your moment resistance moment resistance again we are taking cc right so in this case i am taking moment about this point so in a section you can take moment about any point right so this is your ts so basically ts and if i take moment about cc this is your lever arm okay so which you have done ts multiplied by z will give you your moment resistance z is nothing but effective depth minus beta 1 x by 2 so if you substitute that you get a moment resistance 302 So if you go back for f prime c of 40 mega pascal for the same sectional dimensions for the same reinforcement ratio, we got a moment resistance of only 316 kilo newton meter. But by reducing the concrete strength from 40 to 20, still I am able to get 302. So there is not big difference between 316, the very first case that we considered, and 302 that what we are considering. So what we can say here is. For a heavily under reinforced section, we put a very low amount of steel, half a percentage, where the balance to steel ratio was about 3.2 percentage. The failure is governed by steel yielding in tension. By changing the concrete compression properties, the behavior is not really going to change much. So that's why we get an ultimate moment resistance of still a 303. and curvature also you see there is some reduction in curvature of course 
and then you get this. So this is your entire range. Okay. So by reducing compressive strength, of course, there is a reduction in curvature. But in terms of moment resistance, we are not really uh, finding a significant difference. So same thing we can do for 30 megapascal. So you will find that uh, part at epsilon is equal to 0 0.0035. Again, if I assume different neutral axis, and then at 68.6, I am finding that it is achieving the equilibrium condition. So, uh, so this is your XU at ultimate. Then again, from similar triangle, I can calculate my epsilon t as like this, which is also you can see for even 30 megapascal steel, the steel has reached a very high strain, which is 0 0.0246, which is much much larger than your epsilon y, which is 0 0.0025. Okay. So again, tension forces, stress in the steel multiplied by the area, area remains same, stress in the steel remains same, 500. So the tension force is going to be 600 kilo because I have not really changed the area of steel. And it is yielded. So tension force between the either you are having 40 megapascal or 20 megapascal or 30 megapascal, the maximum tension force offered is still 600 kilonewton. And now, now that I have increased my F prime C from 20 to 30, you will find that now my I need a smaller neutral axis depth to reach a 600 kilonewton. That is why the neutral axis depth is slightly reduced because alpha one is not going to change, beta one is not going to change. F prime C has increased. So the only way I can achieve a 600 kN is by having lower neutral axis, which is 68.6 compared to the previous case. So previous case, if you see, the neutral axis depth was 102.8. Okay. So by having a neutral axis depth of 68.6, now we achieve the equilibrium condition. So then we can go ahead and calculate my moment resistance. Again, if you see here, the moment resistance is 311 for 40 megapascal with same reinforcement ratio we got a moment resistance of 316 when it reduced to 20 megapascal the moment resistance reduced from 316 to 302 but when i increase the compressive strength from 20 megapascal to 30 megapascal you see here there is again small change in your moment resistance so 302 has become 311 it's only about uh, 9 kilonewton meter, which is not a very significant when you compare 300 value, right? So, what we can infer here is for a heavily under reinforced section, changing the compressive strength of concrete will not really give you increase in your moment capacity. But what it can give is it can uh, it can play a role on your curvature at failure, okay? In fact, if, if uh, for example, if in the previous case 68. 40, if I reduce the compressive strength, the curvature is slightly reduced. Similarly, if you go back to the previous case, the curvature at failure was for 20 megapascal, it was still, it was 34. So for 20, the curvature at failure was 34. When concrete strength increased to 30, the curvature at failure has slightly increased from 34 to 51. And for the same section, when the compressive strength increased from 30 to 40, the curvature is at failure has increased from 51 to 60. So, increase in compressive strength for a heavily under reinforced section will help only in increasing the curvature at failure, which is good from ductility point. However, the moment resistance is not really going to change significantly. So, that is what we are going to look at. So, if you plot all these curves to compare apples to apples, we are plotting these three curves. The first one is for a 20 megapascal, same section, P is equal to 400, depth is equal to 600, amount of tension steel is 1200 mm. So you see here, this is the moment curvature that we got. When I increase the strength from 30, uh, 20 to 30, you see that the moment resistance has not really changed. But what has happened is the curvature at failure has increased. Okay, so this is the curvature at failure. We saw that. And it has increased to 51, right? When I further increase my compressive strength, again, there is no change in your yielding moment or no change in your ultimate moment. However, the curvature at failure, this value has become from 51 to 60. So what we can infer is for a heavily under reinforced section, by changing the concrete strength, we are not going to get increase in your moment capacity. However, if you increase your concrete strength, you are going to increase your curvature at failure or in other words, the ductility, the curvature ductility of the section is going to increase.
Okay, so this is the way we can plot. So you see here, the moment resistance remains nearly same, whether I am taking 20 megapascal or 25 megapascal or 30 megapascal or 40 megapascal, it remains nearly same. But what happens in curvature? You can see here, it is uh, it is curvature. I am plotting it in the secondary axis here. Curvature is increasing from let's say 40 to about 68 or so when the strength increase from 20 to 40. So curvature is increased from about 30 to almost 68. So increasing the compressive strength of concrete for a heavily under reinforced section is only going to help in increasing the curvature ductility. Right? So F prime C increases, moment capacity does not increase, and F prime C increases, curvature at failure increases. Okay. So this is the reason. So from the equations of equilibrium, when you look at it, now this steel has yielded because heavily under reinforced section. So for ultimate condition of point 003, alpha 1 doesn't change, beta 1 doesn't change. Now if I increase my F prime C to satisfy equilibrium condition, X value has to reduce. When X value has to reduce means you know that curvature is, what is curvature? Again, epsilon Cu by X. For epsilon Cu is always 0.0035. Now, when x is reducing, you will find that my curvature at failure is going to increase. So, for the increase in FMC to satisfy equilibrium, the neutral axis depth has to decrease. When the neutral axis depth is reducing, when I consider epsilon Cu as a constant value of 0.035, I am going to have increase in curvature. However, there is not going to be any change in your moment capacity. So, uh, in this module, we have in depth we have understood what is the relationship between curvature and uh, the strain, right? And we also looked at what is the relationship between moment and curvature. And then we discussed how to do the moment curvature analysis for an under reinforced section or a singly reinforced section, right? And then we distinguished between different failure modes and flexure, under reinforced, balanced failure condition. And over reinforced condition. Under reinforced condition is also called as tension control failure. Over reinforced failure condition is also called as compression control failure. Balance condition is concrete reaches its failure strain of 0 0.0035 at top, and steel reaches its yield strain of 0 0.0025 in the case that what we considered or yield strain simultaneously at ultimate. Okay. And also we discuss what is the effect of increasing the percentage of tension steel on the moment curvature analysis. We have found that. When you start increasing the steel on the singly reinforced section up to balanced reinforcement ratio, you are going to gain increase in moment capacity. However, the curvature at failure is going to reduce. More the amount of steel that I am putting for a singly reinforced section, curvature at failure is going to reduce. And also we saw what is the effect of compressive strength on the moment curvature analysis for a heavily under reinforced section. We found that increasing compressive strength was not really helping much in increasing the moment capacity for a heavily under reinforced section. Okay, this is very important because we did the analysis only for a very low reinforcement ratio of half a percentage. However, the curvature at failure is going to increase. Okay, so with this, uh, we will end this uh, module. In the next week, we will talk about how to analyze for a doubly reinforced section and also we will talk about how the IS code uh, designs are carried out. Right, with that, thank you. I'll see you in the next week.